But thinking about solving cybersecurity using crowdsourcing, that, that sounds crazy, right? Um, well, it sounded crazy to us too, but we started to ask people, if we created a solution like this, would you actually use it? We asked real potential customers. We asked people back at the NSA, does, does this sound even feasible? Um, and they said, you know, it does. But what you have to really think about are all the implications with, when, as it relates to crowdsourcing in the consumer space. And you have to address those implications for business, right? And so there were five th things that we sought uh, to address. Um, one, trust, right? These are hackers we're talking about. How the hell do you trust a hacker, right? Um, so we, we inserted a vetting process. We do background checks. We do ID verification. We have to do this globally, right? We're in 40 different countries today. And so we had to enlist the help of a lot of third-party companies to help us do that. Um, we also vet our researchers from a, a skills perspective. We only want to work with top people, right? And so we can't just say any Joe Schmo off the street, come work for us. Um, we put them through a practical exam and a written exam to make sure they meet our minimum bar of, of skills. Scale. How do we scale this business? Ultimately, um, there is, like I mentioned, a, a, a shortage of talent in this space, right? Um, and so for us, we recognize that in order to be a scalable company long term, we had to turn to technology. We couldn't just rely on people alone. And so we decided to create an automation platform in conjunction with the researchers that we would be utilizing in order to automate some of the low-hanging fruit attacks that they're throwing at our customers. And that, and that has turned out to be an amazing uh, resource for us, and we've been putting a lot of engineering effort into that technology. Management. How do you manage hundreds, if not thousands, of hackers around the world, and how do you enable customers to interface with them on, a, on an ongoing basis? Um, well, we created a platform. We created a whole online interface where researchers can submit vulnerability data that they, they find on customers. We, we created an interface for customers where they can see what's happening and, and, and all the, the high-impact vulnerabilities coming from our customers, uh, or from our researchers, rather. Um, and all of that is contained in one easy-to-use online interface. Um, we even have a, a function for our own internal team um, to, to leverage uh, interacting with both sides. Engagement. How do you keep research? Or how do you, we call them researchers? By the way, it's kind of you know it's a little less scary than hacker. But um, uh, but how do you keep researchers engaged? How do you keep them motivated to find these really hard issues? What if they're only looking for the the really easy stuff to find? Um, so what we inserted was actually a bounty driven approach for conducting um, vulnerability research. So we basically said. If you're a hacker and you find one, of the, you go through our vetting process, you find a problem on one of our customers, we're only going to pay you if you exploit that customer, you find a vulnerability on that customer. And we're going to pay you based on the impact to that organization, right? So it really aligns the economics in a, in a fundamentally just better way. Um, so we're not paying them time and materials. They don't get paid unless they're finding things. And they're getting paid when they find really serious stuff, a lot of money. We paid up to $25,000 uh, for a single vulnerability so far. And then, and then intelligence, right? Um, how do we make sure we, we understand what the researchers are doing, right? It's one thing to say, OK, you know, we're getting lots of vulnerability intelligence coming from the researchers, but how do we actually know what they're doing on a day-to-day -day basis? And long term, if a customer is getting more secure, hopefully we're not finding anything anymore. So how do we actually prove to that customer um, that we're still doing work, right? And so we have a whole analytics and intelligence platform that feeds real-time data to our customers. So that's how we've addressed all the problems with crowdsourcing as it relates to the cybersecurity space and as it relates to hackers.